So after many years of asking, Microsoft has built a laptop, the Surface laptop. It is a very thin and quite light 13.5 inch laptop with a resolution that I don't even remember. It's a very strange number resolution in a 3 to 2 aspect ratio like the other Surface systems. And it's a screen and a base with a hinge. The screen doesn't come off. The keyboard is an integral part of the unit. It is just a laptop. It's a smart looking machine. The fabric feels very nice under my hands. None of the cold metal and sharp edges that is distressingly common on other laptops. Color coordinated mouse is a nice touch, although it doesn't come as standard. It's a separate purchase. Well, they come in three of the colors. No charcoal mouse, strangely enough. They're very nice because they off, on. Certain models are available in, in colors. On the inside, they have U-series KB Lake processors, the first Surface system to actually use Intel's latest chips. And the keyboard feels much like other Surface keyboards. It's got uh, 1.5 mil of key travel. Feels nice. Touchpad is a decent size, nice smooth surface, fast responsive, two-finger scrolling, multi-finger gestures. The ports are unfortunately just as we come to expect from the surface. For charging and connectivity there is the proprietary magnetic docking port and on the other side we have USB type A and mini display port and a, and a headset jack so no USB type C here, no thunderbolt. So there's a webcam that supports facial recognition but again this is just a laptop so we don't have a rear facing camera unlike a tablet. Surface laptop will ship with Windows 10s but unlike the more education oriented systems that are cheap starting at about 200 bucks this starts at $999 so the bottom spec $999 gets you actually not a whole lot 128 gigs of storage 4 gigs of RAM regular Intel graphics and if you want the full range of colors you're very limited if you want more memory more disk space or the faster processor you are getting it in platinum and the platinum doesn't look bad but it's not as exciting as the blue or the red the core i7 includes iris pro graphics so it has the memory integrated on the chip so it should be a little faster but unlike the surface book there's no discrete graphics option because there really isn't room in this skinny base this machine is clearly not competing with $300 Chromebooks. It's actually operating in the same kind of space as the MacBook, the MacBook Air for people who are still buying those, maybe even the 13-inch MacBook Pro. So the pricing isn't quite as unreasonable as it might seem. But the Surface Laptop could fall into the same kind of trap as Google's now discontinued Chromebook Pixel. Chromebook Pixel was a very nice, very well-made, very attractive machine but it was a thousand dollars or more and the only thing it could run was Chrome because it ran Chrome OS. Surface Laptop with Windows S is a little more flexible than that because it can support apps and it does have Office. But if you want to run any Windows application, you'll have to pay an extra 50 bucks to upgrade it to Windows 10 Pro. Although it comes with Windows 10 S, Microsoft is running a promotion. If you upgrade before the end of the year, you can get Windows 10 Pro for no extra cost. But after that, running any old Windows app will cost an extra 50 bucks. First impressions are that the Surface laptop is a nicely built, nicely put together, attractively designed laptop. It also doesn't have anything that's immediately special. It doesn't have the tear off screen that the Surface Book had so it can turn into a tablet. It doesn't have the detachable keyboard that the Surface Pro 4 has with the kickstand and Microsoft has made some decisions that I think are a little strange. There are a range of fairly decent Thunderbolt 3 docks and there are some quite fancy options such as nice high-res displays with good integrated peripherals that will charge your laptop and connect to the screen all over a single Thunderbolt 3 cable. Can't do that here. I can use the Surface dock but that's it. I only have one USB port which is again not a whole lot. It's only generation one USB, so only five gigabit per second. 
for a thousand bucks or more, I'm not sure that's quite good enough. Thunderbolt 3 and the USB Type-C are in their infancy today, but already the USB Type-C for charging is becoming commonplace. Phones are sort of starting to standardize on it. It feels odd that Microsoft has stuck to its own proprietary connector and older generation ports. As a result, I think the Surface laptop is a lot less special than the other surfaces. The other surfaces, particularly when they were first launched, had unique features that justified buying a Surface. My initial impression of this system is it doesn't like it. We know that companies like HP and Dell these days are producing really good laptops. Would I pick a Surface laptop over one of those? I, I'm not sure that I would. When I get to use it a bit more, then uh, I may grow to love it. And certainly, these are all things that make it nice, but I don't know that they make it great.